time is of the essence. The clock is always ticking. There is a pressure to get the deal done. So I want to make sure that good is good enough, but I'm not in search of perfection. And I think that in, when you do the forensics on the other side, if you answer it with, well, that was an opportunity that I missed, but if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have stopped the transaction for that opportunity. Then the opportunity was, it was still a successful transaction. What have you found to be some of the challenges with some of the, you know, uh, some of the ways that people have exited in the past or the ways that you've exited? Huh. My exits, um, I look back on every single one of them and kind of do forensics on them. And I don't think I've done one yet that I haven't said, well, I could have done that differently or I could have done that better. And I would say that the most important advice that I can give to anybody who's doing a significant exit is that it's the caliber of the team that you surround yourself with. So just to be blunt, I'm never going to be as savvy or sophisticated as I hope the lawyer that I have by my side, my CPA that I've got by my side, and the others that are on my deal team as I'm exiting this particular asset. But typically, there's a great deal of time sensitivity and a great deal of pressure, which is a competing interest in diligence and slowing down and getting prepared and getting all your ducks in a row. And so I think um, that the only advice I can give is twofold. First, the caliber of the advisors that sit to my right and to my left are inherently integral into how I feel about the success of that transaction on the other side of it. And yes, I have gone through transactions and immediately fired people sitting to my left and right. So I've, I've made those mistakes my own, on my own self more than once. Um, the other thing is just that you can't cry over spilled milk. And I don't want to get the, the detail to be so critically important that I lose sight of the opportunity of the transaction itself. Time is of the essence. The clock is always ticking. There is a pressure to get the deal done. So I want to make sure that good is good enough, but I'm not in search of perfection. And I think that in, when you do the forensics on the other side, if you answer it with, well, that was an opportunity that I missed, but if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have stopped the transaction for that opportunity, then the opportunity was, it was still a successful transaction. And I'm not going to get caught up in the miss that perhaps I've identified. On the other hand, if it's that big and I'm really upset about it, and one of these people sitting to my left or right is going to get fired over it, then boy, that's a big takeaway. Absolutely. No, that's so much wisdom there. I love the way you put that. You're right. It's always great to reflect, but it's also great to be uh, you're grateful for whatever, every, everything that has been, right? It's a great exit, right? And, and uh, yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't cry over spilled milk. I like it, but you also take action and say, well, what did we do wrong? And by the way, the same group that helped you to get from zero to 10 million may not be the same team to take you from 10 to 50 or 50 to 100 or 100 million to a billion, right? Each each level that you're leveling up as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a real estate owner, the team may need to adjust or you need to add a player to the team, right? I think of like, you know, the, the Golden State Warriors, you, you can't have five Steph Curry's. Well, maybe you could, he might be the one guy you, you, you could do that with, right? But, you know, you need to have the Draymond Greens, the, you know, you need to have the uh, the Clay Thompsons, you need to have the different players in place uh, to fill the roles um, to, to win the championships. And sometimes that means leveling up um, I'm curious, have you done 1031 exchanges before Lyle or what, what has been your typical way when you exit assets and how you're deferring capital gains taxes? What's, what's been your strategy? Yeah, Brett, I have not personally delved into 1031 exchanges, not because I haven't considered it, but because looking at the interest of time, I've been too focused on wherever I'm going next to evaluate that 1031 exchange is something that's going to that, that I'm going to focus on. So just full transparency. I have not done 1031 exchanges. Yeah. I mean, honestly, a lot of our clients haven't either. And that's why they find us is because that time piece, we call that the shotgun wedding when essentially they're, yeah. they're running around in 45 days to identify 180 days to close. And sometimes they're even selling businesses or crypto or stock, which are not 1031 eligible. And so we offer something called a deferred sales trust that works for any asset of any kind. And we say it eliminates the need for the 1031 exchange when you don't have to get the time piece against you, right? Time becomes your friend in this strategy where there's no like kind replacement requirement. You can, you know, a business venture can go into a real estate or real estate into business or crypto into real estate, all tax deferred, but there's no time pressure, right? You can sit in T-bills while you're waiting. You can sit in hard money lending while you're waiting, and then you can purchase things at optimal timing. And what I also say, optimal entrepreneurial journey, because we're all in different journeys and different stages. 
and this capital can be used to fund those deals or to start new companies or to build that new project. If anyone is curious about how that works, you want to learn, learn wants to learn more, you go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. That's capitalgainstaxsolutions.com.